If you opened the Sydney Morning Herald or The Age this morning, you might have choked on your coffee. These papers usually try to frighten you with global warming and the so-called climate crisis, but today it was a bold declaration about the threat of war with China, the red alert. Australia faces the threat of war with China within three years, the nine newspapers declared, and we're not ready. This special report came with embedded video online. I think the one big thing Australians need to know about our defence and security is that the world is moving from a period of disguised competition uh, to a time where we see the major powers getting ready for conflict. Sobering stuff, isn't it? We've heard from Peter Jennings often on, on this stuff on this station, of course. And the big spread of these newspapers included editorials, the paper's formal view, telling us that Australians have been kept in the dark about the threat posed by China. Well, a couple of things. First up, this is a pretty good series from the nine newspapers. Credit where it's due, Drew. They're, uh, they're right to draw attention to this stuff. This is the sort of thing you could have read about repeatedly in The Australian in recent years. You've seen us discussing it here with experts for many years as well. In fact, just last month, we aired a good documentary on this and uh, it was hosted by Pete Stof Stefanovic and it was talking about the prospect of conflict with China and asking, are we ready for war? There's a repeat screening of that doco on Saturday night, by the way. So that's my second point here, that Australians have not been kept in the dark. More to the point, those raising the alarm have often been held down. One of the leaders of this debate was the late Major General and Senator Jim Molan. We are likely in the next three to five years or in the next five to ten years to be involved in a war between China and the United States. Former Major General and Liberal Senator Jim Molan says Australia must develop a national security strategy to prepare for war. A war is more likely now than it's been probably for 75 years. Now, they're pretty frightening words, but they're also carefully calibrated and they're now endorsed by so many other people. But what was the reaction from the then Labor opposition? Labor says speculating about war is only making a bad situation with China worse. What we need now is a calm and strategic approach from Scott Morrison. Yeah, and incredibly, one opposition leader thought the solution was, well, you listen for yourself. What exactly are you talking about when you say you want some deeper military cooperation with, uh, with China? Well, what we're talking about is not treating uh, China as the enemy. And there were plenty in the media who were in denial too, especially at the ABC. There's a bully in the school and the bully's name is China. You know, when you, when you look at what China has done in the South China Sea, all, almost to, to reinvent the geography of that, of that key shipping area, Samoa, uh, the Solomons. Um, it's recently opened a, uh, uh, an embassy in Kiribati. Now, th these are not... These are not... But these are, these are, this is not necessarily evidence of bullying, is it? <laughs> this is not evidence of bullying, says the ABC host. And what about the key players now, those who are in federal cabinet now? Here's the foreign minister back in the opposition days criticising coalition warnings on China. The strait between Taiwan and China is one of the world's most dangerous flashpoints and Penny Wong thinks the Morrison government is playing with fire. Amping up the prospect of war against a superpower is the most dangerous election tactic in Australian history. We have a government who appears to be willing to stoke anxiety, to fuel anxiety about conflict, about war. So it seems Wong is happier lecturing Britain about the evils of colonialism than she is about calling out communist strategic aggression. What about the man who is now Defence Minister? I don't think China is, is the Soviet mm. Union. Um, and, and I think the rise of China is something that fundamentally we should embrace. And I think it is important to uh, note, as I, as I often do, that, that I don't think with the Chinese government or with China we're talking about the former Soviet Union. This is not a country which is seeking to export its ideology or its system of government to us or anyone else. During this week the ambassador has come out and said there's no intention to seek hegemony, to seek expansion or spheres of influence. 
Is that an accurate statement? I mean, I, I, I take uh, the Chinese ambassador for what he's saying. The important point here um, is that it, it, it would remain a profound mistake to define China a, a, as an enemy.